Welcome back. It is now March 29th and we've had a few beautiful days. However, there was a little bit of snow last night, about a quarter of an inch, and that burned off by this afternoon. We're about five degrees Celsius out here right now. Things are looking pretty good. I'm just in some barley stubble here at the moment, taking a look. And I'm not seeing much for emerged weeds, although there is reports of a little bit of kochia germinating here and there, but very little in this area so far. Mostly what I've just found is some overwintered dandelions, but let's take a look at some soil temperatures. So here you can see how much soil temperatures come up since last week. We had beautiful weather all weekend and now at two inches depth we're at about 6.5 degrees Celsius here in this bare soil even though we were minus four last night so that's looking pretty good. But as soon as I move over here to this patch of heavy straw you can see soil temperature here is still zero degrees so still cold in some areas where have you got heavy trash and that's pretty normal for this time of the year so something to keep in mind if you're thinking about seeding early. Well, here's a sheltered spot by the pivot point, and you can see this area here is sheltered from the wind. It's relatively bare soil, it was able to warm up a bit, and you can see we've just got an absolute mat of kochia has germinated here. So probably you'll start seeing this throughout the fields here now as the days go on. These guys are mostly just caught a lead and just starting to put out the first leaves on a couple of them. So they probably only germinated, you know, on, during the weekend here a couple days ago, and uh, you know we'll be seeing more as the days go by now. Here's another patch of kosher skeletons in an irrigated barley field, kind of in a dryland area between pivots here. You don't see anything immediate, but as soon as you get down on your hands and knees and you start looking real close, you can see we got just an absolute little mat of kosher seedlings coming up here and there. It's not consistent, but there is patches of them throughout the field. In other spots, you got to kind of dig for them, but they are here. So keep an eye out for these guys. Not always obvious when you're walking around even, but you gotta get right down and look at them. But these guys are gonna get big in a real hurry. We're supposed to be like 15 degrees for the rest of this week, I think. So these guys are gonna just about double in size every day. So better get on them if you wanna seed early. Well, it's not just kosher. There is also some Russian thistles showing up. It's very, very small. It might not show up very well on camera here, but there's a couple of them right here. They're just caught a leading stage right now, about a half inch in size. So they're still very, very thin and wispy and would be basically impossible to hit with any sort of chemical at all. But a few more days of plus 15 and they'll be a bit bigger. Of course, right now, all of these little koshas are so small, it would be extremely hard to hit all of them with any sort of pre-burn product at all. You might get a pretty good percentage of them, but you'd no doubt miss some of them. The real issue in here, of course, is if you were to come into this field in, say, four or five days of more warm weather, these are going to be about the size of a dime. And if you come in here, even with relatively small knife openers on a drill, say, you know, three quarters to one inch wide, I'll show you what happens. That shank or disc or whatever is going to be coming through here, and it's going to be, you know, cutting a furrow, disturbing dirt, and it's going to be covering up those little kosher seedlings right along the very edge or in the mid row where have you with trash and with soil and those kosha will stay covered up for a few days so maybe you come in the day after two days afterwards and you spray over top you're going to be missing those guys they're going to be covered in soil and then when they emerge after a few more days they're going to be you know half an inch to an inch in size and they're going to be ahead of the crop which is going to be just starting to emerge at that time now, if we have good moisture conditions and it's warm at that time, it might not be that much of an issue. The crop competition will quickly crowd out some of those kochia, as well as in-crop herbicides will no doubt do a pretty good job in about a month or so whenever we get there. But if it's dry and cool conditions and the crop is really slow emerging, that kochia might just take over. Here's some irrigated winter wheat near Picture Butte and everything here is looking pretty good. Overall there's very minimal winter kill except for a few spots in the dry line corners where there was some wind erosion that caused some abrasion issues. But you can see we do have some dandelions here so this was would have been germinated in the fall and it is now kind of reactivating coming back to life. It's putting out new growth. Here's a stinkweed, so this is generally a fall annual. Don't see a lot of this on dry land this year. It's mostly all on irrigation where there was enough moisture for it to germinate in the fall. And then right here is a little yellow whitlow grass. This one here appears to be a species of goosefoot. So this has survived the winter, so this would have germinated in the fall as well. 
Well, I haven't found too much flixweed yet, but here is a patch in this one field in a dryland corner. So there is some emerged winter annuals here. I, I haven't been finding a whole lot on dryland yet. It's just too dry in the fall for it to even germinate. Barbed wire fence did a decent job at capturing some of the neighbor's kochia anyways before it blew into this field. Certainly didn't get it all though. Well, here by Lethbridge, there's definitely pockets of overwintered cleavers. So these little guys are just greening up, getting going. There's uh, still some really, really small ones here. Most of them, I would say, are about, you know, that two inch size. So good time to get control of them now before you're in crop because most of them are group two resistant. Some are group four resistant. They're getting harder and harder to control. There's also some dandelions coming up here as winter annuals. Here you can see we actually do have some overwintered canola. So this was in obviously canola stubble. So it must have had enough snow that it kind of protected it from the worst of the weather. And now it is starting to green up again. Well, soil temperature has definitely been increasing. This field that's going to be going into barley, you can see we're about six, seven degrees here now at about two inches depth. But you can see like it's it's pretty dry, that upper inch, inch and a half. There's very, very little moisture. And even once you go farther down, there's there's not a whole lot of excess moisture by any means. You can't make a ball or anything like that out of it. So hopefully we have enough to get things germinated. This will probably get started seeding maybe next week. So by then, hopefully soil temperatures will be even a little bit higher and everybody will be getting into the swing of it. And for those of you that have not done any soil sampling yet, we are now offering the Cellumetrics soil sampling through our office. You can drop off a sample. We'll send it off for analysis. It'll show you all your nutrients in total plus what is in solution and available at the time. Makes those decisions very simple to interpret compared to a more traditional soil sample test. I won't play the whole video for you here now, but uh, if you are interested in watching and learning more about it, there will be a link in the upper right corner to their video on YouTube. And that'll be it for this week. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.